Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm so excited because we got Subway and we're gonna do a little mukbang, which I haven't done forever. I just decided I wanted to chat with you guys while I eat my lunch and let's begin. First, I wanna go over my Subway order because I have it down to a T at this point. So, foot long. I've been vegetarian since June, so I just get vegetables. I got spinach, peppers, onions, tomatoes, and cucumbers is a recent addition just to like bulk it up a bit. And then I get a little drizzle of the Chipotle Southwest sauce. So good. I've been getting sun chips recently because I never know what to get and then just end up with those. What better way to start this food video than talking about food, specifically my vegetarian journey as of now. Mmm. I noticed in the mirror the other day that my bottom teeth are kind of getting crooked so i started wearing my retainers again just the bottom one and it's been like three nights but my teeth feel like i just got my braces tightened so it's gonna be kind of tricky so like i said i became vegetarian june i think of this year and it's something that i kind of wanted to do for a while i gave up eating red meat because i enjoy cows um i would say three-ish years ago maybe four and then i just like kind of slowly transitioned meat out of my life. I incorporated more plant-based meats like tofu, like tempeh, like seitan, and just kind of tried to reduce my meat consumption. And that's generally what I'd suggest for anyone who wants to try to become vegetarian. I don't really believe in like the labels of vegetarian or vegan because I think that they are restrictive and they also prevent people from trying to eat more plant-based because there are these like definitive lines of if you have any sort of dairy or eggs, you're not vegan. If you have any sort of meat or fish, you're not vegetarian. And I think it just kind of causes problems because it's sort of like the all or nothing mentality, which in turn just kind of has people fall back to just doing nothing rather than like making an effort. Like so many things regarding the environment, making an effort is the most important step and it doesn't need to be some like grand gesture. Just have meatless Mondays or something like that and just kind of like get comfortable with that. I don't think I got enough of the Southwest sauce because this is a little bit bland, I'm not gonna lie. I can't honestly say that I've noticed any sort of like great differences in my health or wellness having become vegetarian, but like I said, I was kind of transitioning to that anyway, so it wasn't necessarily like a cold turkey type thing, but on like a very general level, I feel healthy and alert and energized if that makes sense so i definitely haven't noticed any like negative impacts being vegetarian staying on the same sort of like wellness topic i kind of wanted to talk about working out a bit because i've been working out fairly consistently for i think like eight months and it's really become like a great part of my routine i feel definitely like stronger and healthier and better i also have days like yesterday where i wake up to my alarm and i just have no interest in working out i feel like just like showing up is the most important thing. It's so like making that effort of getting out of bed, getting dressed and going to the gym. Even if you just walk on the treadmill, even if you just stretch and like kind of do like minimal exercise, I still think like getting out there is important. Another thing that I do when I don't feel like going to the gym, sometimes I just don't feel like getting dressed. Sometimes I don't feel like seeing other people. Sometimes I don't feel like weightlifting, like whatever it is. And I just go for a walk. I personally love being in the city and going on walks because they are very walkable areas as well as there's so much to look at, so much to do, so much to see. My walks in Boston are precious to me. And so again, if I wake up and don't feel like it rather than lying in bed or being on my phone, I just go for a walk. And that's kind of a compromise that I've come to terms with. But again, I think that all or nothing mentality prevents a lot of people from like being successful in their goals, if that makes sense, without sounding too preachy. That's my personal opinion. Oh my god. This is unbelievable. I'm making such a mess. It's like a nature valley bar. Another thing that I've been thinking about like consistently for the past month has been the reminder that it is not my job to be pretty or attractive or put together or anything like that. And sometimes I just forget that. And like I'll find myself getting ready for the gym and trying to like comb down my hair, trying to make sure like put on a hat because my hair looks gross. And I'm like, who am I? Who am I getting dressed for? Who am I trying to put myself together for? Because when it comes down to it, when I step out of my house, I don't like see myself again. I might go to the bathroom and see myself in the mirror once, but other than that, like I'm not standing face to face with myself. I don't care what my hair looks like. It's not preventing me from being productive. And so I just like have been trying to remind myself, yes, there are days that I want to get dressed and wear a fun outfit and like I feel pretty and confident and whatever. At the same time, even on those days, it does not matter what I look like, but I think that there's such a pressure for women to feel the need to be put together constantly. And I feel like it's fairly safe to assume like a lot of you have experienced instances where you're not wearing makeup or you're not very dressed up and someone asks if you're sick or you're on your period or whatever. And like, that's just so f***ed up because literally it does not matter. 
and yes certain places have dress codes whatever like dress codes honestly don't even get me started i don't really care if it's business or if it's school i think that people should wear what they want be comfortable and their clothes are not going to affect their job performance so that's a whole other thing but it's like a very freeing feeling when you remind yourself like it's not my job to be nice to look at like i can be and i am but also it's not my responsibility and so i shouldn't feel any sort of pressure to look presentable when i leave my home and that's a really nice thing to like reiterate to yourself i used to like when at home when like my whole family was having dinner my brother and i sat across from each other and sometimes just like randomly during the meal i just like open my mouth and show him my chewed food and I always thought it was so funny. I'm not gonna do that now, but just know I could. And I have. Just like my face. That's one thing that I'm really bad at is I have this voice in the back of my mind constantly when I'm having a conversation with someone that I have something in my teeth. Like if I've eaten anything, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's in my teeth. Because, and this is like kind of valid because I have very deep like teeth crevices. And so like things get stuck in there all the time and it's so embarrassing because there's nothing worse than being like, hey how are you and you have a spinach in your teeth on my first job ever there was this kid and i swear anytime we had a conversation he would tell me there was something in my teeth and that's like the most humbling thing ever while simultaneously being so embarrassing because every time i'm like how the f literally he would always be like oh you have a blueberry in your teeth what so i like notice myself like laughing or like talking with like my lips covering my teeth which is so stupid it's another kind of aspect i guess of like wanting to look presentable like who cares nobody dies if i have food in my teeth i just look a little stupid and then i get it out and it's fine i like to change i'm gonna lie in that's criminal the fire alarm one second talk about less than ideal um just a little fire drill i think we were talking about books i don't even know if i got there yet oh yeah goodreads linkedin and venmo are like my three social media platforms that i have so i really like to use those up and whenever i have a new picture of myself or a selfie i like to update my profile picture so it's sort of like i'm posting but i'm not because it's on the most obscure social media platforms anyway my goodreads this year i have read 77 books which, but i want to read you a few of the books that i've read that i've really enjoyed recently okay first up is actually eleanor oliphant is completely fine I started out hating this book. I found her to be wildly unlikable, rude, just like, I just didn't like her. And obviously that was the intent and I was quick to judge and it's a really good book. I would recommend reading it. Another book, American Dirt. It's a really, it's like an upsetting book. It's an emotional book, but it's like a very powerful book. And yeah, it's wonderful. It's about this woman Lydia and her son Luca. They live in a city in Mexico that is pretty much just controlled by the cartels and Lydia's husband or Luca's dad is a journalist and so obviously that's like a very dangerous job to have in that situation and so it kind of just goes through their lives. I would definitely recommend reading it. Next up, I cannot remember if I've talked about this on my channel if I haven't. Oh my gosh. A House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is my number one favorite book that I've ever read. It's about a man named Linus who works for the Department in Charge of Magical Youth and he's essentially a caseworker so he looks at different orphanages and determines whether they are safe for the magical youth to live there. He's summoned by the Extremely Upper Management, which I just love the name. He's assigned this case that's classified and pretty complex where he has to go to an island that houses this orphanage and it's an orphanage that has five of these like very powerful and unique magical creatures, magical children. And so he's tasked to go there and this story is the most heartwarming, like endearing, cute, fantastic books ever. This book is definitely like barely fantasy, but it does have some fantastical elements, but oh my gosh, I cannot recommend this enough. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and so many more to come. I have so many videos that I'm editing and just trying to like compile clips for, so more videos soon. I love you guys and I will see you next time.